This leatherwork comes to life when it meets light. Light gives them movement. Light gives them a soul. If there's no light, it's like life without a soul. There's just the body. Thus we can say light is the life of shadow puppets. With shadow puppetry, you can't separate the performance from the puppet makers because the important medium in any show is the leather shapes. I'm the son of a shadow puppet performer and the son of a shadow puppet maker. My father told me as a small child I'd sit on his shoulders as he hammered the leather into puppets. By the time I was in kindergarten, he let me make them too. My father came from a poor family. If he had to put on a show, he fashioned the leather himself. He had to make up the stories himself too. So it was instilled in me as a kid to become a craftsman, a performer, an artist, all in the one person. As a kid, when I was old enough to play cymbals, my father took me along when he performed. I'd play the cymbals and perform with him. This was in primary school. I learned everything from my father. The tanning process, carving the leather. I started to get good at it. By the time I was at college, I was an all-round artisan and craftsman for my family. I could do everything. Academics say shadow puppetry came from India around a thousand years ago. Brahmins were thought to have brought it in during the time of the city Wichai Empire. The truth is, the creative process begins with each puppet's shape, in the shape of animals and humans. After that, we decorate it with Thai designs to turn it into a specific character. The important thing about doing this is you have to concentrate and be confident in yourself. If you have both, you won't make mistakes. The reality is this puppetry is the art of shadows. It's the art of using still shadows up against the screen along with shadows that move. When the shadow of the puppet moves away from the screen into the light, that's when the puppets come to life. But this is not just shadow play. There's the spoken prose, the art of moving the puppets. All these things means a performer has to practice hard before they really master the craft. Hello. This is the story of Prat Waranat Chat Gasat, who went to the temple to study with a hermit monk. <laughs> Okay, money for you. Thank you, Papa. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> 
this is where we attach a bamboo stick to the leather. We call the stick mai tapnang. The sticks are used in part to control the movement of the puppet. This part enables the puppet to move about. I think I feel the happiest when I've finished making one of these puppets and I'm so proud when someone buys one of my puppets and uses them in a show. If you ask me if I've always been proud and happy with crafting these puppets, early on I didn't feel so proud. When my father was making these and performing, I really didn't have any contact with my relatives. Even when I graduated from Silapakon University, I was still sitting here hammering away at leather. People thought, why doesn't he continue his studies? At the time, my friends all wanted to be government officers, lawyers and such. These were professions where there was great competition, but nobody wanted to be a shadow puppet maker or performer. There was no competition, so I decided to do that. I use cowhide for tanning the leather and a hacksaw blade to cut it. My decision to turn my house into a museum, I was inspired by an amazing day when I accompanied my father to meet His Majesty King Pumipon at Taksin Rachaniwet Palace back in 1984. His Majesty asked my father if I could make shadow puppets and perform like he could. My father replied I could create the puppets but my performance was still not good. His Majesty asked why that was so. My father answered I recited the prose in a central Thai accent, not in the local Thai dialect. Then His Majesty turned to me and said go on, give me an example. I recited prose using a southern accent. When I finished His Majesty said you're better than your father. I can understand everything you say. I received a blessing from His Majesty the King. It was the most valuable and sacred blessing I'd ever received and led me to success in preserving Thai culture at a national level. My Thai Shadow Puppet Museum acts as a fountain of knowledge for anybody around the world who's interested in the craft. This is what makes me proud. Now I'm a lecturer at Nakhonsi Tamarat Rajapat University. I'm passing on my knowledge of Thai shadow puppets to my students. Other teachers may not have a classroom for their students, but I have a whole house, a museum as their classroom. I can't be a leader of Thai shadow puppetry forever, but I have the chance to give back to society by making my students my artistic heirs. My father used to say, if you work for yourself, when you die, you die. But if you dedicate your work to others, your work lives on. I'm so proud to be the son of a shadow puppeteer, the son of my father, Suchat Sapsin. And even though my father's passed away, I still follow in his footsteps to keep shadow puppetry alive in Thai society. Mm -hmm.